Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com and today we're taking a quick look at and installing the K&N Series 77 FIPK cold air intake with the oil filter available for the 17 to 19 6.2 liter F250 and 350 Super Duty. Simply put guys, you should be checking this out if you're looking to get rid of your factory more restrictive air box and dry drop-in paper element filter to replace it with an upgrade that's gonna help your engine breathe a lot better, give you a small bump in horsepower and torque and a noticeable increase in throttle response and acceleration as well as a better sounding engine with a more aggressive tone. Now, some guys even report getting a nice whistle from this, and it's something that just beefs up the aggressive profile of the F250 and 350. Now, this one here in particular from K&N uses a black powder-coated metal tubing or aluminum tubing, rather, that's better for heat dissipation, and it's kink-free to make sure your airflow has a smooth flowing finish, as opposed to the factory air box that has a lot of kinks and airflow restriction and that bigger sound tube that you get from the factory. I'll take a closer look at that, comparing it to stock a little bit later on in the video. Up front here, obviously the star player is going to be your filter. Now going from the factory paper element to an oiled cotton gauze filter like this one is going to give you a noticeable increase in the airflow coming in, the cold air coming in, and it's going to do a lot better job filtering out the particles you don't want making its way into your engine that could otherwise bog down and rob you of some horsepower over time. Now another key thing to remember about this oil filter is that it's easily washable and reusable, so it lasts up to about 100,000 miles. You can pop it out, wash it, reuse it, re-oil it, and throw it right back in. Now I'll talk a little bit later on about the benefits of the oiled versus dry filter as well because they do have the certain applications that you might want to keep in mind. Now the price tag for this one comes in at right around 450 bucks. Keep in mind guys, right out of the box, it does not require a tune. It's a direct bolt-on install that you can immediately reap the benefits from and hit the road immediately. So you don't have to worry about picking up a custom tune which can obviously add cost onto the fact. Now the install, one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Anybody can tackle this with about an hour's worth of time from start to finish. Quarter intakes are one of the easiest things you can do to a truck or a vehicle in general, as a matter of fact, just because they are pretty easy. Just follow the steps by step and I'm gonna walk you through that process. Keep in mind that the F250 and 350, they're bigger trucks. I'm a short guy. I'm gonna be using a topside creeper to help me get over the engine bay. I recommend a step stool of some kind, especially if you're on the shorter side like myself, just because this is a little bit higher off the ground and the throttle body is deeper back into the engine bay by the firewall under the dash. So it can be a little bit more difficult or challenging to work on if you're shorter, but just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna walk you through the process. It is pretty simple. Let's get started. Tools used for the install include an impact gun, an extension and ratchet, small Allen key set, seven millimeter swivel socket is recommended, eight and 10 millimeter deep sockets, 10 and 14 millimeter wrench, pliers, some snips, and a panel removal tool. First things first, let's look at the driver's side of our factory tubing. We have two hoses we need to disconnect. We have one up top here that has a hose clamp on it and one that has a quick disconnect. The quick disconnect, you're just gonna push up on that gray locking tab to unlock and pull straight off. For the clamp, you'll need a pair of pliers and you're basically gonna pinch the top of it and pull back on the hose. There you go, just like that. Next, we're gonna grab a swivel socket, seven millimeter on an extension in my impact gun. You can also use a flathead, it's just a little bit of a tight space here. We're gonna loosen up the clamp connecting the tubing to the throttle body. Next up, a little bit more to the left from that clamp here is a hose clip. Now that's just connecting the black plastic to the breather line hoses right underneath of it. So grab a panel removal tool. We're gonna pry up underneath of this clip where it connects to the plastic tubing and we're just gonna snap it off. Next up, next to your filter, right next to where the fender connects to that filter there, there are two eight millimeter bolts holding this guy on. Grab your extension and eight socket and get those off. All right, once they're loose, go back in there and get them. All right, at this point, pull out the hose tubing from the factory throttle body, lift up on the air box, and you can set the entire unit aside. Next up, let's get these two bolts off that hold this bracket on that was attached to the factory air box. Grab a 10 millimeter socket and get those two bolts out. Right, 
set this aside. So we got our factory intake off of our 18 F250 behind me, the 62, and it's on the table next to our KN Series 77. Let's go through some similarities and differences here. And in order to do that accurately, I took apart the factory intake to expose that filter. Now you don't have to do that, but I just want to give you that very clear side-by-side -side comparison. Now the factory filter here is a little bit different than most factory filters. It's a 360 degree cylindrical filter as opposed to a flat paper element drop-in. Now while this is a still paper element dry filter, it's a little bit more of an upgrade, so it does do a little bit of a better job, but in comparison to our k &N, no comparison whatsoever. This guy's not really optimized for airflow, and as you can see, it's pretty filthy with not so many miles on the truck. Now, if you're looking to really optimize that airflow, this filter here is gonna be a whole lot better. This one here is a conical oiled cotton element filter. Now, the oiled filter is sort of the best of both worlds. It does a really good job pulling in all of that air, but it does an even better job filtering out all those micro particles that you don't want making its way through your intake system and ultimately your engine, which can really bog down and rob you of some of that power. Now, that oiled filter there is gonna require a little bit of maintenance when it comes time for routine maintenance, which you really don't have to do very often for an oiled filter, but it's washable and reusable, so when it does get gunked up and it's time for cleaning, you can pop it right off, wash it, let it dry, re-oil it, and throw it right back in. It's super simple to do. Now, if you're not looking to do all that maintenance, dry filters are another option there, which don't require re-oiling, very easy to clean and throw back in as well. If you're located in a dry climate area, seeing a lot of air pollution, the dry filter might be the way to go because it won't get gunked up as often as an oil filter. Either way, best of both worlds, and an oil filter is super, super efficient. Now, the cotton element is a lot more opened up than a dry paper element. The paper element is super closed off. When it comes to optimizing airflow, the cotton filter is gonna do a lot better job. That open element there is gonna let air pass through so you get a little bit more volume without requiring a tune. Now, the rest of the kit is also gonna be an upgrade. You can see this crazy shape from the factory. It's got a lot of sound tubing and sound deadening technology in that tubing there, which makes it absolutely huge. It's also kinking up and reducing some of that airflow. The airflow being kinked up makes it less efficient. So when you switch over to just pretty much a straight tubing there, it removes some of those airflow restrictions, lets it breathe a lot better, which can give you that bump in horsepower and torque. This one here is made from an aluminum tubing with a black powder coated finish. The aluminum is good for heat dissipation as opposed to the plastic there. And without the sound tubing and the sound deadening technology that the factory one has, you get a little bit more of an aggressive sound out of the intake as well. The black powder coated finish really is only gonna give you that aggressive look under the hood, blends in a little bit more with the engine bay that's predominantly black. But if you're looking for more of a show car finish, there's a chrome option as well, or a polished finish for the guys looking for something that stands out a little bit more. And it's got the really nice Canon logo there, vinyled on in that color popping contrast. The rest of the kit, billet aluminum for the heat shield there. This guy here is an open air box as opposed to the factory closed air box. And it comes with weather stripping that'll seal in underneath of the hood, blocking out that excess engine bay heat and keeping in all that cold air. The rest of the kit here has your velocity tubing there. It's also got some new couplers that are gonna do a lot better job sealing in that cold air, making sure there's no air leaks. A lot different than your flex tube that you get from the factory, which also kinks up the airflow. With that said, guys, we have a little bit of assembling to do on the table, so what do you say we toss our factory stuff aside and focus on assembling the new one? Now, when it comes to assembling your new intake, there are two different routes you're gonna take, or at least two different routes for one of the fittings. Now, some factory tubings come with two hoses that you need to disconnect uh, that have hose clamps on them. One will be on this side, and one will be on this side. Our factory intake only had one on this side. We did not have one in the center. You would have seen that when you're taking off your factory intake. If you had to disconnect two hose clamps, then you'll have two to install on the new one. Because we only had one, we're gonna plug up this hole in the inside. If your vehicle has a hose tubing that goes on this side, you're gonna use one of the hose fittings. If you're like us and you did not have one in the middle, use the delete plug. Now the delete plug basically just gets inserted so it plugs that hole up and you don't have to worry about uh, it having an air leak or throwing a check engine light. Make sure you plug that guy up. When it comes to installing these fittings, whether it be the delete plug or the actual fitting itself, it's really easy to cross thread because it's plastic going into metal. Hand tighten it as tight as you can get by hand and then you just do two simple turns of a wrench to get it tightened down. It may not completely tighten down, and that's okay, it's still tight. You don't wanna over tighten it and cross thread it. So what you'll need to do is grab a 14 millimeter wrench and give it that two turn tightness. One. Two, perfect. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side with an actual fitting. Now that fitting, there's a number of different ones included in the kit. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're grabbing the one that makes sense for your application. Some of them you may not be using. I'm gonna use this guy here. 
and we're just gonna thread it in again by hand all the way down and then two turns of the wrench. One. Two. Perfect. Next, let's install our couplers. Now, the coupler here that's tapered is gonna go from the tubing to the throttle body. The coupler that has the same size on both sides with a bump in the middle is gonna go from the tubing to your air filter. I'm gonna start here on the one that goes to the throttle body, insert a clamp over the end of it, and then insert that over the end of the tubing. Make sure it's seated completely, grab an eight millimeter socket and tighten this guy down. All right, now when it comes time to actually install it on the vehicle, you wanna make sure you have another one over the other end. What I'm actually gonna do with that guy is grab one of the smaller clamps, insert it, and I'm just gonna get it nice and snug so it stays on, and then when we put it on the vehicle, we can tighten it down over the throttle body. On the other end, grab another coupler, make sure you have another clamp, insert that over the end, insert the coupler onto the tubing. Again, make sure it's through, grab your eight socket and tighten it down. You can also use a flathead too, but the eight socket's quicker. I'm gonna do the same thing to this end. Perfect. Now we can assemble a couple of things on our heat shield. Next, let's take the air filter adapter, insert it from the inside going out, and then you wanna spin it so the threaded holes line up with the holes in the air box. Grab the hex screws and flat washers, and you're gonna secure that from the outside. All right, now you can use a hex socket. I'm just gonna use a simple Allen key to tighten it down. Perfect. Next up, this little retainer pin is gonna go right here on this little drop down tab. It's got a threaded hole in the back. Put a 10 millimeter bolt along with a flat and split washer on the inside, and we're gonna secure that together. Tighten it down by hand, and then grab your 10 socket. I'm gonna use a little ratchet here and tighten it all the way down. Next, we can install this adapter bracket to the side where the intake adapter comes out. You wanna put a 10 millimeter bolt through the top with a flat washer. On the other side, you wanna put a flat and split washer along with the nut. Grab a wrench, hold the nut, grab a socket, and tighten it down from the outside. I right, wanna leave a little bit of room for adjustment so we can swivel that guy, and then we can tighten it down later if we need to once it's back on the vehicle. Now we can do another one of those knobs on the other end of that bracket. Grab your 10 socket and tighten that down. Next, let's grab our edge trim, and we're gonna start installing it down here where that knob is, and just work our way around, and when we get to the edge, we'll cut it and continue around the bottom. All right, when you get to the end here, you can cut off the excess. Now this piece, we're gonna to apply to the bottom. Next up, let's take our filter with the filter clamp on the end, and we're gonna insert it onto the filter adapter in the air box. Crack this guy loose just a little bit so we can get that guy on there. All right, from there, grab an eight socket and tighten it down. Next step, we're gonna actually install in the vehicle. Grab your air box, and you're gonna drop it in place. Those two little knob holders there are gonna get snapped into by the little adapters that we installed earlier. So just drop this guy into place. It may take a little bit of finessing to get it to seat properly. You wanna basically aim for those little knobs and mount them in place. Now for this next step, installing the tubing, you may need to make some adjustments and trial and error it when it comes to the couplers being angled properly. You're basically gonna slide this guy onto the throttle body, and you're gonna bring it over and match it up with the air box.
Perfect. Once you have that guy lined up, tighten down your clamps. All right, grab your eight socket and tighten down those clamps. Same thing on the throttle body. All right, next up, tighten the clamp on the throttle body. All right, at this point, we're just gonna reconnect our hoses and we'll be good to go. So you just wanna bring this guy over and this is a quick disconnect. So you can easily just snap it in place. The other one you're gonna to need to grab your pliers for. You're just gonna to pinch to open that clamp up. Push the hose onto the new fitting. You wanna make sure it seats all the way. All right, let that clamp go and you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install for the K&N Series 77 intake, available for the 17 to 19, 6.2, F250, and 350 Super Duty. Get yours right here at americantrucks.com.